Salam sejahtera. Selamat kembali ke seminar SPM bersama Cikgu Wisundram. Welcome back. So, the next question is question number 7 for set 3. So, this question is related to absorption process. Soalan ini berkaitan dengan proses penyerapan. Dalam set sebelum ini, saya ada satu essay. Sepatutnya ada satu essay berkaitan dengan bab 9. Satu daripada soalan dalam essay itu adalah berkaitan dengan proses penyerapan. Tapi soalan itu hanya uh, berdasarkan kepada penyerapan lipid sahaja. In the one of the essay question that we did before this, we did a nutrition chapter, we did do an absorption question, but it was only about lipid absorption. So carbohydrate and protein absorption, I didn't ask in the essay question. So the question that we are going to do now, soalan yang kita akan buat sekarang adalah berkaitan dengan penyerapan hasil pencernaan karbohidrat dan protein. Products or digestion of carbohydrate and protein, how are they absorbed? That is the question that we are going to do now. So let's go into the question. One look at this diagram, you should immediately know this is villus. And I already mentioned it's villus. Raja di bawah menunjukkan satu villus di dalam usus kecil manusia. It shows a villus in human small intestine. So the first question that we have in here is, Explain the adaptation of villus in absorption of digested food. Terangkan penyesuaian villus dalam proses penyerapan makanan tercerna. Okay, now, di dalam syllabus dari segi penyesuaian, kita ada dua soalan. Penyesuaian usus kecil untuk proses penyerapan. Penyesuaian villus untuk proses penyerapan. By right, under the adapt adaptation question, we can ask you adaptation of the small intestine to do absorption process. We can also ask you adaptation of villus for, for absorption process. So the adaptation is villus is what I'm asking here. But since we are doing a revision, I just give you a quick answer for adaptation of small intestine. In terms of small intestine, super easy explanation. Intestine, small intestine is long. Inner surface is highly folded. Inner surface is covered with villi. It's long. Inner surface is highly folded. Inner surface is covered with villi. All of this increases total surface area for absorption of nutrients. That's the adaptation. Dari segi usus kecil, penerangan dia agak mudah. Usus kecil panjang. Permukaan dalam usus kecil berlipat-lipat. Permukaan dalam usus kecil diselaputi oleh villus. Semua ini akan menambahkan jumlah luas permukaan untuk penyerapan nutrien. Itu sahaja. Penyesuaian usus kecil, adaptation of small intestine for absorption is a easy question. Here I'm asking for adaptation of villus. The good news is the whole adaptation is already in the diagram. So first you need to know, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, Permukaan luar villus diselaposi oleh lapisan sel epithelium. So, the outer surface of the villus is covered by epithelial cell layer. Clearly, you can see in the diagram, the epithelial cell layer is only one cell thick to absorb more nutrients. Lapisan sel epithelium itu hanya setebal satu sel untuk meningkatkan penyerapan nutrien. That is one of the answers. The second answer that you can see in the diagram, in the center of the villus, di bahagian tengah villus ini ada lactyl. Lactyl ini kita sudah guna dalam soalan esai sebelum ini. Lactyl yang ada di dalam villus akan menyerap hasil pencernaan yang larut lipid. The lactyl inside the villus will absorb digested substances that are lipid soluble. For example, vitamin A, D, E, K and also lipid droplet. Titisan lipid, vitamin A, D, E, K boleh diserap ke dalam lactyl. Sebab villus ada lactyl, dia boleh serap hasil pencernaan yang larut lipid. Because villus have lactyl, it can absorb lipid soluble digested substances. What about water soluble digested substances? Water soluble digested substances are absorbed into blood capillaries that we found around the lactyl. So, lactyl dikelilingi oleh jaringan kapilari darah. Jaringan kapilari darah ini boleh menyerap hasil pencernaan yang larut air. That's basically the answer. The epithelial cell layer is one cell thick. 
it has lactyl to absorb lipid soluble nutrients it has blood capillaries to absorb water soluble nutrients ada lapisan epitelium setebal satu sel dia ada kapilari darah untuk menyerap hasil pencernaan larut air ada lactyl untuk menyerap hasil pencernaan larut lipid that's the three answer that i have in here the first adaptation Epithelial layer of villus is one cell thick to accelerate nutrient absorption. Lapisan epithelial villus setebal satu sel sahaja untuk mempercepatkan penyerapan nutrient. That's one answer. We need only two answers for this. The other two answer is it has lactyl to carry droplets of fatty acid and glycerol. I'm just using back what's in the textbook. Ada lactyl untuk mengangkut titisan asid lemak dan juga glycerol pada masa yang sama. Juga ada jaringan kapilari darah untuk memudahkan pengangkutan hasil pencernaan ke seluruh badan. As network of blood capillary to transport digestive products to the whole body. This is what's given in the textbook. So you can write back this, you can get the answer. Or you can also mention the, the other explanation that I gave earlier. By having lactyl, they can transport fat-soluble nutrients such as lipid droplets. By having lactyl, they can absorb fat-soluble nutrients such as lipid droplets. Kalau ada lactyl, dia boleh menyerap hasil pencernaan yang laru lipid seperti titisan lemak. Sebab ada kapilari darah, boleh menyerap hasil pencernaan yang larut air seperti glukosa dan asid amino. Because they have network of blood capillaries, they can absorb water-soluble nutrients such as glucose and amino acid and transport to the whole body dan diedarkan ke seluruh badan so ini penyesuaian villus penyesuaian usus ke sel sudah diterangkan adaptation of uh, small intensity given adaptation of villus is also already given selepas penyesuaian villus after the adaptation of villus what is the next question that we have So the next question is, how does the absorption occur? As I mentioned earlier, absorption of lipid soluble nutrients are already asked in the essay. So in here, just to remind you, products of digestion of carbohydrate, products of digestion of protein, how are they absorbed? I'm asking this question. Penyerapan lipid sudah diterangkan dalam soalan essay. Dekat sini, saya nak soalan berkaitan dengan penyerapan hasil pencernaan karbohidrat, hasil pencernaan protein. So, dekat sini kita ada glukosa dan fruktosa. Bagaimana glukosa fruktosa diangkut ke dalam kapilari darah? Actually, this is the answer for the earlier question. Glukosa dan fruktosa diangkut ke dalam kapilari darah. Itu adalah jawapan untuk soalan tadi. Kalau ada kapilari darah, boleh menyerap hasil pencernaan yang larut air. If they have blood capillaries, they can absorb water soluble nutrients such as glucose and amino acid so the next question is partly the clue so how glucose and fructose are transported if you remember the essay question that we did before in the previous set glycerol and fatty acid are transported into the epithelial cells through simple diffusion glycerol and fatty acid are transported into the epithelial cell through simple diffusion and then condensation will form lipid droplet the lipid droplet will be absorbed into the lactyl also simple diffusion dalam soalan acid glycerol acid lemak diserap ke dalam sel epithelium resapan ringkas selepas kondensasi titisan lipid diserap ke dalam lactyl juga melalui proses resapan ringkas So, penyerapan lipid ialah resapan ringkas. Penyerapan glukosa dan asid amino. Dekat sini saya tak tanya asid amino. Tapi, glukosa dan asid amino dan galactosa. Glukos, galactose, amino acid. All of them are actively transported into the epithelial cell. The reason I, I ask this question is to remind you. Glucose, amino acid, galactose, all of them are actively transported into epithelial cell. Glucosa, galactosa, acid amino, diangkut secara aktif ke dalam sel epithelium. Fructosa, fructose, in English is a bit easy. Fructose starts with alphabet F. 
So you can remember the F for facilitated diffusion. Fructosa diangkut ke dalam sel epitelia melalui proses resapan berbantu. Fructose is transported through facilitated diffusion. Just to remind you that I ask you this question. So the answer for this question is standard. So jawapan dia senang sahaja. Glucose glucose is transported through epithelial cells into blood capillary through active transport. The main point that I want to highlight to you is glucose is active transport. I didn't ask in here. You can add into your answer. Glucose, galactose, amino acid. Glucosa, acid amino dan galactosa diangkut melalui sel epitelium ke dalam kapilari darah melalui proses pengangkutan aktif. Fructosa adalah satu-satunya proses yang menggunakan resapan berbantu. Fructose is transported through epithelial cells into blood capillary through facilitated diffusion. Fructosa diangkut melalui sel epitelium ke dalam kapilari darah melalui proses resapan berbantu. So, lipid, hasil pencenaan lipid diserap melalui proses resapan ringkas. Hasil pencenaan karbohidrat, glukosa, galaktosa, pengangkutan aktif, fructosa, resapan berbantu. Asid amino, pengangkutan aktif. Air melalui proses osmosis. Water is absorbed through osmosis process. That's basically it. So, this is a very cute, compact question. I just wanted to remind you the adaptation of the small intestine, the adaptation of the villus to do absorption process. At the same time, the absorption process in the new syllabus. Proses penyerapan dalam syllabus baru agak detail. Nutrien-nutrien berlainan menggunakan proses yang berlainan. So, untuk mengingatkan kamu. Penyerapan lipid, asid lemak, gliserol, resapan ringkas. Asid amino, glukosa, galaktosa, pengangkutan aktif. Fructosa, resapan berbantu, air melalui proses osmosis. Just to remind you all of that, I ask this question. So, this is a cute, compact question. I think this is where the question ends. Yes. So, it's just to remind you all of these simple points that we can ask as a structure question or as an essay question. So we are done with question number seven. So question number eight is about nervous system. The two types of response that our body can do. It's another interesting question for us to discuss. I'll see you in question number eight.